Man, what an opening game. Uh, France is smacking the AVs or All Blacks 29 to 13. Holy shit, there, there's a yellow card. There was um, the, the, what was it? The, the crowd was intense, man. Every call that the, that Yaku Paper made, the crowd was just into them. The intensity of the game, like I think the first 90 seconds was out of this world. And then it kind of slowed down a bit as well. And guys were just feeling each other out. But man, like we've said throughout, like building up to the World Cup, how important is it to have your kicker kicking well? Yeah. Yes, like 100%. Yeah. 100%. Man, he was, um, well, well, first of all, I mean, what a great game to get started in the World Cup. Not only that, mate, to have the hucker as one of the first things to introduce a Rugby World Cup, like how iconic. Um, yeah, great first game. There was a few... Um, like you said, it started a little bit slow. Like um, just before we hit that record button, I was just saying that I struggled in the last first twenty minutes. Sorry, just to sort of go, oh, where's this going? But then it just picked up and picked up, and it just that crowd, like you just touched on, mate, Stade de France, beautiful stadium. The, you know what the French crowd like, mate? They're bouncing up and down, they're singing, they're cheering, they're whistling. Um, it would have been very, it would have been a great experience for all those players as an opening game and. Yeah, I, did I expect that? I don't know if I did or not, to be honest. I know we, we said in previous episodes, France always show up, you know, and um, man, they were good today. Even right to Very the loss, there was like five minutes to go and they got a quick, or they got a penalty and they're ahead. Mm. And the yeah. hooker, their reserve hooker that played most of the game, he's gone for a quick tap. I mean, he's gone 50 like, meters down you, the field yeah, as well. What are you doing? And, but then he goes yeah. 50 meters down the field. <laughs> they play on, they eventually get another penalty and then they go and score. Leads uh, to a it try. Shows that it doesn't matter like what the game is looking like. The French are going to still play that their style of of, yes. of and it's working. yeah, and 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 unpredictable. Like you said, that that quick yeah. tap from that hooker, he made 40, 50 meters, and even his own teammates were like, "Oh shit!" Now oh, to like shit. try and catch up to him. Yeah, but, you know that that led to a try. But going back to what you just said, mate, I was really really impressed with that. Um, Thomas Ramos, uh, the the French fullback, mate, his goal kicking style with his um his fluency he doesn't look like missing yeah he missed a couple but my god he can he can kick a ball that that kick from 50 meters cleared yeah. the crossbar by 10 like again moving forward for the other teams about to play france or you know the teams that are going to play france you can't give away penalties in in your own half because he's going to punish you so again importance of a goal kicker not only a, a goal kicker one that's kicking at 85 percent as well which is big it's big for a um is a big percentage for a goal kicker in any in any you know rugby league or rugby union. So yeah, it was great, mate. I absolutely loved it. Absolutely. I want to start. We'll start with the with the All Blacks because they come out firing, man. That first mm. first play where both teams, so All Blacks on attack were very flat, and France on defense were very flat. Rush defense. The problem yeah. with that is on rush defense, if you're not connected, they can find a hole, and that's where oh. Rico Ioane is the one of the best at finding those holes. So they'd run that angle back at the ball and gone straight through. Yeah. And the interplay um, between having Bowden Barrett at fullback and being able to swap so he can jump into 10 and then him sitting in the pocket to cross kick to Talia. Um, yeah. oh man, that just, I was like, holy shit, are the floodgates going to open straight away? Yeah. Same, mate, that passage of play leading up to that first try. I mean, even when Bowden Barrett hit that crossfield kick, I could see he didn't really connect with it well. It sort of floated in the air and it still bounced up. And, it, and I was like, this could be New Zealand's day. Yeah. Um, Ioani breaking the line like that. I think, you know, if you look at the rest of the game, France did extremely well to stop that after that first initial two or three minutes in the game. So they sort of learned from that first mistake. Um, but like you said, Ioani's so elusively quick and strong he breaks he breaks tackles and you you give him the slightest gap he's running through it and you yeah and like that they showed you what they can do when they when they break the line and they get quick ball they'll punish you so france you know for that to happen in such an early period of the game france to go on and sort of counteract that whole part of their their game plan was was outstanding from france just grinding grinding it out i thought staying on all blacks so they like i said they were very very um flat on attack like it's it works really well when you execute it well, but then yeah. later on in the game they were still keeping that flattened attack, which obviously means that your ball players are making decisions right at the line, and then yeah. are having to catch the ball right at the line. And when France kind of figured that out, man, they're making their one-on-one tackles really good in the second half. I mean, in the yeah. first half they missed 
22 tackles. I saw that. When they were not, yeah, it's crazy. Hey? When they were not Mental. up and making their tackles, All Blacks were getting really undone there with that flat style of play because losing the ball in contact a lot or running out of kind of getting out isolated. So your support yeah. is running past the guy with the ball. And France yeah. over the ball on ruck time. Just crazy, man. I They're really good like that. We've um we, we've talked a lot about Plan B for a lot of teams, and yes. um I think at, at a period of time there for France, uh, sorry for the All Blacks, they get the ball, and you saw them sort of stand there and go, sort of like bounce around and go, oh shit, like this isn't going to plan, and you know they had to rebuild again. So like I said just a minute ago, like France sort of identified what their strengths were, yep. sort of used them to their advantage, and and sort of caught, I think caught New Zealand off guard, and it took New Zealand. A little, a little while to get back into the swing of things. Yeah, they did in the end, but again, France maintained their their strong defense and strong attack. Um, but they definitely, I feel, I mean, the the packs, the packs. I think the the French pack for me yeah. just absolutely smashed the All Blacks pack. And you you look at that All Blacks pack, man. There's experience. There's big bodies in there. Um, but yeah, the All Blacks, mate. They um, they'll, they'll take a lot from this loss, mate. Moving forward, I'm never ever gonna, you know write them off at yeah. all, but they all learn from this. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, Sam Kane, their captain, and one of their like most experienced players being ruled out right before kickoff. It's yeah. a big, I mean, that throws a massive spanner in the works. I did think Tupovai that come in um did really well. Yeah. Uh, but what we're like they could they could just not get continuity with their attack. Like they were finding lots of space on the 15s, out in the 15s. Yeah. And I mean Mark Talia scored twice out on that side but they really struggled to get there. So they would yeah. either, the, the, the ball would either be turned over before they got to the 15s or France were just shutting them down. I mean, and yeah. saying that they France missed 22 tackles in the first half, like All Blacks didn't capitalize on that at all. No, yeah. no, they didn't. They didn't at all. And I'll tell you one thing that I noticed. I don't know if you, you sort of picked up on it. If it wasn't for Scott Barrett, for me, Scott Barrett was absolutely yeah, insane really. in this game. Yeah. If it wasn't for Scott Barrett in that forward pack today, I don't know. I, I feel like France would have put a few more points on. He was good in defense. He was good in attack. Like he was doing little things that I picked up on. I was, I watched him after the first sort of few minutes. And I was like, geez, you know, he's really going for this. And he was doing those little one percenters. Not only that, he was, he was coming up with some pretty big plays as well. I, I, Scott Barrett to me in that whole forward pack in, in both packs combined was just incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Stand out for sure. And I know yeah. we love talking about forwards, man, but yeah, fr French, France's forwards did like two or three scrum penalties, their line outs, the malls there, they were just, dom yeah, really dominated. Um, the yeah. And all blacks forward. And like, like I said, that hooker, their starting hooker after 12 minutes went off with what looks like a hamstring injury, which he looked pretty devo on the bench. So obviously he's, he's not, he's not liking to feel with that hamstring right now. Um, but yeah, France just, just um, aimed up, man. They just, they really took it to the All Blacks. And again, did they take the All Blacks by surprise? I'd hope not. I'm, I'm sure the All Blacks would have done their homework and they know France are dangerous, but I don't, I, it just looked like they're a little bit rattled today, to be honest. But uh, just quickly before um, the chip kick by Adi Sevilla. I don't know if you, you saw that. Not This is this is the, the confidence of the All Blacks. He had, I think he had Barrett outside him, Mwanga inside him. So you got the two kickers there and then Adi Sevilla. Makes chip. Um, executes a little chip kick. So it's, um, you know, you've you got to be careful of the All Blacks. Like it just goes to show their their talent all over the field. It's a good segue to, I feel like they kicked too much and mm. the execution of some of the kicks weren't the best. Yeah. We always expect All Blacks when they get the ball kicked to them to run and attack. And just, I felt like a lot of times that they kicked a bit too much. It was just aerial ping pong at times. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, you you would have picked up on it. The the temperature there today, they obviously had drinks breaks halfway through each half and 30 degrees, very humid. Um, again, probably, I mean, the All Blacks used to that sort of conditions. The French would have been, maybe not to that extent, but, you know, they're used to those environments and those temperatures, whereas the All Blacks have probably come from a colder sort of climate. So that might have shocked them a little bit as well in, in terms of fatigue. Um, but yeah, I mean, even that, you, you look at uh, Tales second try, I mean, forward pass, I mean, I don't know, in your opinion, to me, it was a little bit forward. I mean, if he doesn't, if that gets pulled up, the scoreline's blown out there. Yeah, yeah. Even so at, it's, at um, what it's like now, I mean, 29-13. Yeah. It's double yeah. up. That's more yeah. than that. Um, oh, and then lastly, with All Blacks, Richie Moonga's try saver. Oh, mate. And quality players, you know, like reading the game and then being able to be in those positions to make those sorts of plays. 
Yeah. Uh, quality. Quality. Good. Unreal, mate. And those those times where you're, you know, your troops are down, you see one of your experienced players make a play like that, that that's going to pick you up. But, um, but yeah, that was unreal. I mean, he's quick. He's quick. So I knew he probably had a good chance to get there, but to knock the ball out. And um, but anyway, they went and scored straight after. So it was sort of a bit that's of bit of sweet for, for Moanga. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, segueing from that, Damien Pernell, you expect him to score there. Hey, you want your wingers. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because that could be a different, in a different game. That could be quarter, semi final. They need those points. Yeah. And man, like you, you, he had run into the line. You want him scoring. You want him scoring there. Ball in the other hand, maybe the dive into the corner. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, like, jumping on the on French, we're talking about All Blacks not kicking well. On the other hand, France were kicking really well. I think execution yep. wise, I mean, you got Dupont, probably the best player in the world right now. These little box kicks, pinpoint. Um, uh, Gelabert, G- I think that's how you say it. Yeah, yeah. Gelabert. Gelabert, I think they were saying, yeah. Gelabert. Like, there's a lot of talk. Obviously, Intermac got injured. This guy steps in. He's been in, in, yeah. in and around it before as well for a while. Yeah, just execution. I think, man, him sitting back in the pocket, kind of letting Dupont take the shine, but him sitting back in the pocket, knowing where to kick and then knowing when to run the ball as well, when to change direction. Daniel, yeah. no second opportunity there to score. He read that play nicely, man. I think they did two or three phases to the left, and he cut back at the right time. Ball in two hands, drawing three defenders, and putting Pono over in the corner. I think he's a call out. He was a standout for me. Yeah, what what surprises me about Dupont is, yeah, he's renowned for his box kicking. Mate, he can belt a ball, man. Like yeah. some of those kicks, oh. he, he's just got, he times the ball so well. Um, not only that, you look at. I just want to touch on Dupont. His speed. Um, there was a little box kick and his speed up against Bowden Barrett, who yeah. arguably is one of the quickest players in the game. Um, kept up with him. Um, he's just an all round great. You know, he comes he comes off the pitch. He gets you know subbed in and subbed out sorry in the commentators like he's all over the newspapers he's all over the magazines he's all over this like he's absolutely adored in that country and rightly so he's a captain but it's this all-round game it was great to see aaron smith and anton du- uh, dupont up against each other because two of the best in my in my opinion i think smith's passing game is probably outdoes him but other parts of dupont's game outdoes smith so it was a real real decent battle there but dupont is just a just solid man solid absolutely one thing I do, like one negative thing I want to touch on for France was obviously their defense. I mean, first mm. off, 22 missed tackles. They were rushing up and kind of doing a banana rush. And what yep. the All Blacks had picked up on was outside of 13. That's where the, that's where the space was. I mean, Talia obviously scoring yep. down that side. And I think lots of other teams that are going to play France have definitely picked up on that because that's where All Blacks were, were getting their space. Well, I think it was 17 missed tackles after 25 minutes. But what 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 strikes me is you're playing against such a you know deadly team in the All Blacks. Yeah, they missed the tackles, but were New Zealand just not on form, or were they yeah. actually rushing back and actually saving themselves from these missed tackles? Because, like you said, against another team, that could equate to um, to big points. But they need to fix that. I mean, you look at that. You look at that result, mate. If they fix up those missed tackles. Far out, mate. It, it goes a long way to be a complete performance, and it's going to be extremely hard for other teams to score score against that French side. Absolutely, I think I do think their scramble D was was up there, but it just shows. I mean, they just their heart and everything. I mean, that might be because they're playing on home soil as well. It's the first yeah. ever loss for All Blacks in a pool stage ever in the World Cup. Um, yeah, wow, they would have had that like against the French. They've been like, oh, All Blacks have never lost in a pool game. Oh, man, they really they really picked up for that one. Um, France, yeah, big shock. I feel like, well, yeah, really a big shock. But man, I didn't think. Not I didn't a big shock. You know they're gonna, you, like you know they're gonna fight. Yeah, yeah. you know they're gonna yeah. fight. And, and again, like you know, Dupont and Ramos come off that substitute um, scrum half, and uh, Jamene, I think his name was, came on within seconds. A little box kick over the top, bounces up, lovely. Out, out jumps Moanga and scores a try. And you know they've just two two of their best players have come off. Two players come on, score a try together. It's like it's for the for the team and the squad and the mentality going into this World Cup even further and deeper. It's like wow, we've got a really really strong side here. As we've reflected on South Africa as well, the strength and depth, and New Zealand have got the same. Yeah, but um, I, th- I think for France, I mean, New Zealand will take a lot from it, but I think France will take a lot more. To be honest with you, and and I think going into a World Cup and moving forward in a World Cup, the confidence 
going forward is key. It really is key because New Zealand know now they've got to fix. They've got to fix a lot because they didn't just get beaten. So they got beaten well. So you know, coming off the the um, the Springboks defeat as well, they're going to be hurting for sure. Absolutely. Well, that's our first opener or the opener of the World Cup, man. How good is it to have the World Cup going? So yeah, twenty nine thirteen, a very confident or astounding win, dominant win by the yep. French, the by Le Bleu. Um, awesome for the World Cups, kind of sets it up. Everyone would be, all the French guys will be happy as. And oh. All Blacks have been licking their wounds a bit, but like you say, man, they'll come back. They'll come back strong. They'll come back. Yeah. They'll come back. It, it, like you said, it sets the World Cup in a in a great in a great way. And yeah. um, you know, for the other nations sitting down in their team rooms today or tonight or this morning, yeah. you know, they would have just been looking at going, here we go. You know, it's wide open. Let's go. So you know, there's a few games coming up as one tomorrow. So that'll be interesting. And, you know, we'll we'll reflect on all of them. But yeah, what a what a great start in a great stadium. Like I said, no better way than having the All Blacks perform the Hucker yeah. to, to kick off a World Cup, man. It just it's just what rugby is about. Absolutely. Well, guys, if you're gonna please hit the like and subscribe and all that, there's heaps more to come. And we'll be reviewing, man, pretty much all the games. So keep an eye out for it. And we'll see you probably tomorrow, man. Argentina, yep, England, done. massive game. Oof. Yeah, I know, mate. It, it, look, I'm, I'm not always <laughs> nervous, but this one, the way Argentina are playing, mate, this could be a decent review as well. So come on, England, for me, just for me. Let's go. Go, England. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you next time. See Bye. you, guys.